Welcome to my lecture online and here to understand again diversions better we're going to do a quick visual exercise. All we're going to do here is try to determine if the divergence of these three vector fields is equal to zero, is greater than zero, or is less than zero. So how do we know? Well one of the ways we can do that is by drawing boxes to see if more flux goes in as comes out or less flux goes in or the same amount goes in as comes out. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's draw a box here. And notice that the magnitude of the vector field closer to the x-axis is greater than the magnitude of the vector field farther away. Which means that the magnitude of vector field is diminishing as we go up. Which means it's stronger at the bottom of the box. So we can then say that it appears that more flux is going in the box at the bottom here as coming out of the box at the top. So it appears as if we are losing flux, it's being diminished, which means that the divergence must therefore be less than zero, since we are indeed losing, it's being diminished. So we can say that the divergence of our vector field, assuming it's f, is going to be less than zero in this case. On the next example, again, let's draw a box and see what we get. So we draw a box here, and we can see that towards the bottom and towards the left, the arrows are smaller, which means that the vector field is getting stronger, or I should say the magnitude of the vector field is getting larger as we go to the right, and it looks like the magnitude of vector field is getting larger as we go up. Which means that on this side of the box, the arrows will be smaller. On that side of the box, the arrows will be larger. So we have smaller arrows over here, and we have larger arrows on the other side of the box. Which again, in this case, indicates that it appears as if flux being created inside the box. More is coming out than going in, and therefore the divergence of the vector field must here be greater than zero. So here we're losing flux, the divergence is less than zero, and here we are gaining flux, creating flux, so the divergence is greater than zero. But now let's take a look at our third example. It does appear as if we go to the higher up, the flux increases. As we go further down, the flux also increases. It diminishes as we get down to the middle here, about the line right over here. So if we draw a box, what is going to happen here? Notice that the increase here is perpendicular to the direction of the vector field. The vector field is, goes from left to right. With other words, the magnitude of the vector field is in the i direction, in the x direction, and the change in the magnitude is in the y direction. So if the change is perpendicular to the direction of the vector field, it doesn't add or diminish any of the flux. Notice on the left side here, we have this much flux going in, we have the same amount going out. Here we have less going in, but less coming out. Here we have some going to the left, and here some to the left. Here it's to the left, but more. Here it's to the left, more. Notice that in all cases, the same amount of flux goes into the box as come out of the box, even though it changes direction. So therefore, there's no net change in flux. You can say that the flux in is going to be equal to the flux out and that way we can determine that the divergence whoop, there we go the divergence of the vector field must be equal to zero so here we have the three cases the divergence is less than zero because we seem to lose flux in the box here the divergence is greater than zero because we gain flux here the divergence of the vector field is equal to zero because the amount of flux going in is equal to the amount of flux going out. And hopefully that will give us a very good sense of what we mean by the divergence of a vector field.